Hey everyone, I want to talk today about the importance of early intervention. We always hear over and over again in the autism community and in developmental delays, the earlier you can intervene, the better. But no one really ever tells you why. And I want to show you from a brain-based perspective why it's so important, all of the maturation that's happening in the brain, and why that early intervention is so, so, so important. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dive into all that information and really share with you the maturational process of the brain. So what you can actually see here is uh, I, I just made this just a quick arrow just to give you a really big kind of overview of what's going on. So um, we have a lot of developmental processes that happen from zero to nine months inside the womb, right? But there's a really critical window of development where the brain is developing at a super, super, super fast rate in the first couple of years of life. And I think I have a picture in here. Let me find it real quick. Not that one, this one. Um, when we get into looking at the brain and how fast it matures, this is actually uh, an MRI study of the brain as it develops and the, the networks that are developing here. So you can see by that year mark how much development has actually occurred and how much has actually changed in the brain. And that's really a lot of what's called gray matter maturation, which when we talk about gray matter and white matter, gray matter is, I often just tell parents, it's kind of like the city. It's the buildings in the city. Um, it's all the the architecture of that city or of that brain. The white matter is like all the highways that connect everything, all the roads, all the you know all of that type of stuff, and it develops for a lot longer period of time. But in the first really ten years of life, the gray matter is developing at a really high rate here. So if we jump back to here, in this first ten years of life, we have a lot of gray matter development, and we can see that on this from this study, the uh, imaging structure and functional brain development in early childhood, that what you see here is this is the gray matter maturation, and we get a massive amount of that architecture happening in the first two years of life. So the kid doesn't have a lot of stimulus in that first two years of life. We don't develop this architecture appropriately. We don't develop um, this system nearly, nearly as efficiently. And if we can intervene early, especially before that, those first two years when we start seeing delays in kids, and when we start seeing delays in kids, it's usually the first thing that you're going to see is a motor delay. Maybe they're they're maybe they're not army crawling. Maybe they're not rolling on time. Maybe they're not moving their their body efficiently. Maybe they can't turn their head to one side or the other side. Um, you know, maybe they're not cross crawling right around that six to seven month mark. Maybe they're walking really late. Those are all signs of motor delays, and it's all signs of the maturation of the brain not happening appropriately. So these are our first signs, and they shouldn't be ignored. Uh, and that's one of my biggest pet peeves is when, you know, you, you go to a, a well-meaning provider and like, oh yeah, they're, you know, they're not walking at 18 months. That's, that's no big deal. That's, that's, that's common. That's normal. Worst thing you can say is normal. Um, that's not normal. It's common, not normal. And there is a big, big, big difference between common and normal. In the United States, we are, it, it's common for kids to have delays. It's not normal. So, always think of it as this is when the process is supposed to happen. If they're not hitting those, that's a big deal. Um, but anyways, back to this. Gray matter develops in the first two years of life and really has a lot, still continues to develop at a pretty good rate up until about 10 years. Then it slows down its growth, and then our white matter kind of starts taking over and developing into the, the, at least the 20th year here. Um, it's kind of the, the gist of this. But the best time to intervene is prior to two years. If your kid's older than two years, you go, oh man, my kid's older than two years. Can I make a change? Yes, you can still make a massive change up until about 10 years of life in the architecture, right? In the actual buildings that are there, the, the actual structure can change really dramatically up to 10 years. If you're doing appropriate rehab and you're getting all these, you know, you're really actively working on that. But what if your kid's older than that? You go, oh, well now I can't make a change. That's still not true because you can still work on getting more efficiency. You can, you know, let's say in our town here, we have roads that are connected, but maybe they're gravel roads. Well, you know, you could get much more efficient white matter. You get much more myelination of that system. So that way, now that gravel road turns into a paved road. Now the more efficient it gets, now it's a two lane, three lane, four lane, six lane. Now you have so much more information going into the brain. Um, you may not have as big of a building. You may not have as many different compounds and areas and you know of that city you may not have as much different structural function there but you can make that system more efficient 
And then as you get over 20, it becomes much more challenging, to be honest. Um, it's You can now make just what are called neuroplastic changes. So more efficiency, rerouting pathways, you know, re- rerouting in different areas. Your brain can change through it. We know this from research throughout the entire lifespan, but it's much, much, much faster, much more efficient earlier on. That's because the brain is exploding in development um, in an early age. So if you have a kid, this is why I really mentioned so important is because if you have a kid that is struggling to delay, the worst, absolute worst recommendation a provider can give you is let's wait and see what happens. By far the worst recommendation you could ever receive if you hear that run because there's opportunistic windows that the earlier they are, the faster change you can get, the better change you can get and lifelong that makes a dramatic traumatic difference, sorry, a dramatic difference in their well-being and their development and all the other functions that come after that. So um, if that's what you're hearing, find a different place to go to. And I'm going to show you here, uh, this is an important aspect of development, but this is synapse formation. So you can see here right away when they're born, not a lot of synapses form, not a lot of connectivity. It gets more and more. Six months becomes really efficient. The first two years, becomes even more efficient. We get a lot of connectivity. But then what happens, something really cool, it's called pruning, is um, we have neurons that are being connected that aren't being used anymore. And what happens is we start pruning off those neurons and making them more efficient. One thing that we also know about from research in in autism is is that we get increased pruning because we have overactivity of our immune system. So we actually, a lot of those kids prune off too much of this uh, too many of these connections. But again, it's and this is also my belief, is if you can activate these systems at an early age, you can get efficiency at an early age, It's it comes down to that use it or lose it principle. If you're using it, your, your, your body's going to keep it. And if you're not, you're going to prune it off and get rid of it for more efficiency. Yeah. Um, back to this, though. The uh, This is a really, really important, I, you know, just take a snapshot of this in your own brain. This is a super important, um, just to see how that structure is really, really developing through the first years of life of um, how much connectivity actually happens in that first year. And it's even more, if we go back to here, it's even more in the second year. So the first two years of life, we develop something like it's like 90 something percent of our, our brain size. We get that much growth in that first year. If you can intervene, if your kid's having issues, you're starting to see motor delays early, early on. If you can intervene at an early age, that's the best, best, best time to make changes for your kid. For example, if I if I see a kid that has retained primitive reflexes and they're two years old, it's going to take me a few sessions to get rid of those. Versus if I see a kid that has retained primitive reflexes and they're 15, it's going to take me a month. It's a big difference, and it's not going to be nearly as good as if I could see them at two years because now they didn't have, you know, 15 years of abnormal function, abnormal development of their balance centers, abnormal development of their eye tracking centers. So if we can get them started early, this is really want to make this this video is because if we can get kids started early, we can prevent so many issues later in life. And you know, I want to get in the business of preventing these issues from ever happening because truth be told, this the rate of developmental delays is skyrocketing. So the earlier you guys know this, the better. So if, you've, if you're seeing this for the first time and this makes sense to you, send it to a friend. Send it to someone that has a kid early on. Even if they don't have delays, just send it to them just so they know. They know what to look for because what I find, especially with most new patient, new parents, is they don't know that it's not normal to, you know, the, their child should be rolling in three at three to four months. Their child should be army crawling at that four to five month mark, maybe even into six months. They should be cross crawling at six, seven, into eight months. They should be walking right around their first birthday. But most parents don't know that, especially with there's changes and recommendations from the American Pediatric Association, which are awful, to be honest. Like they, they move back all their milestones. They said they don't need to crawl anymore. They can walk at 18 months. And that's not true. It's not appropriate development or neurological development. Delays may be common in the United States, but they're not normal. So basing your child's motor function off of common and what's currently common is not a good solution because 
very high percentage of the kids in the United States have developmental delays. So unless you're trying to compare your kid to other kids that have delays and their delays in their motor maturation, it doesn't make any sense to take those current recommendations. So the ones that I just gave you, those are the most ideal. So if, you, if you're you a parent of a young kid, you know a parent of a young kid, just send this to them. They need to know this information because if we can get this information out to you know, a bunch of parents and they can see us, oh, my kid was, you know, they were two months delayed in walking and now they're, they're 15 months. Well, now they're only two months behind. You know, let's say they're supposed to walk right around 12, 13 months, 11 to 13. They're 15 months. They just started walking. Okay. They're only three months behind versus if you don't make a change then, and now they're four years old, well, maybe now they're six months behind, eight months behind their peers in other activities because the brain didn't get a chance to mature as efficiently as possible. And now you have to go back and work through that stuff. But a kid that's two years old that hasn't developed primitive reflexes, hasn't developed their balance centers, hasn't developed their eye tracking centers to the age appropriate, it's so much easier to get them caught up. It's very few sessions in comparison to a kid that's 15 years old that never developed them in the first place. Now is having all types of cognitive issues and intellectual challenges and behavioral disorders and um, you know all these other complex factors most of them probably could have been avoided if they would have just known this early on. I mean, that's life-changing. So if we can make that change early as a society in general, and that, and again, that doesn't mean coming to me. I don't care if it's me, but like doing OT, doing PT, doing vision therapy, doing, um, you know, doing chiropractic care, doing all these things that have been shown over and over and over again to improve development in kids, changing their diet. Those things need to be in, implemented early on to help these kids have a better life long term. So um, if this helped you guys, please, please, please share it. Um, I really want to get this information out to as many parents as possible to really help um, change the route of our society. Because to be honest, it's rates of development delays are only getting worse um, in a very fast rate. And, uh, um, you know, anything we can do to help change that and, and change the direction is is key. So have a blessed day. Have a Merry Christmas.